wait a minute. I know you. What you doing just sitting here? What? Don't know how to build no muscle? Don't know how to build no muscle? What the hell wrong with you, punk? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Come on, man. Or girl. Or whoever. Want to build that muscle? I got some tips for you. Let's go. What's good, Fit Family? It's a great day in the neighborhood of fitness. Who am I? You know who it is. It's your man, your new fitness fanatic, King Leo. <laughs> yeah, and I'm here to show you or talk to you about building that muscle. You see the chair. You know where we at. You see the hat. King King. We in the den, baby. We're going to talk about building that muscle now. Honestly, most gonna tell you it's two ways to build muscle and that this is a waste of time. And those two ways are eating big and lifting heavy. You know what? You're right. That is it. That's it. Why am I here? Shit, I'm, I'm out. And all right, I'm back. Look, eating big or putting yourself in a caloric surplus and lifting heavy weights are components to build muscle. But I'm going to take a different approach. I mean, I'm not going to tell you like everybody else. I'm going to tell you the King Leo Leo fitness way we do it. So today I'm going to give you five tips for building muscle. All right? Five tips. So the first tip, which I think you weren't even expecting to hear, is proper lifting techniques. Right? Proper lifting techniques. Why? Here, here we go. Now, when I started getting into weightlifting and the bodybuilding lifestyle. I was 19 years old. I got exposed to it. Now, I've been doing martial arts since I was 10 years old. And all I was doing was high intensity training, calisthenics, grueling martial arts training. So when I got introduced to weightlifting, I was lucky enough to have friends who were weightlifters. Either they were competitive bodybuilders, either they were uh, had been in competitions in the past, either they were coaching. One way or another, they were full-blown bodybuilders. So being exposed to those bodybuilders, I got to see all the pitfalls of improper techniques. That's your, your knee scars from your knee surgery, your bicep surgery scars, your shoulder surgery scars, your torn pec surgery scars, your back surgery scars, all the things that happen when your weightlifting technique is improper. Now, when I'm saying proper technique, you want to lift, try, always try to lift in a straight line. If you notice power lifters or anybody who's ever lifting heavy weight, which is what you need to build that muscle, you got to lift your body in a straight line. Like if you're doing military presses overhead, straight line, up, squeeze, straight line. If you're doing bench press, you're bench pressing out, straight line, in. When you're doing pull-ups, pull up. Straight line in. When you're squatting, squatting, straight line, back up. Those techniques allow your body to have the most strength because all your accessory muscles are working together in order to get that muscle, in order to get that weight up. And that in turn, over time, as you increase the weight and you increase the stability of your accessory muscles, are going to increase your muscular gain. Number two, combination lifts, or as we call it, um, supersets. I love supersets. To me, you can do them. Usually, sometimes people do them when they're in a rush, say you don't have a lot of time at the gym. You superset. However, supersets really are great with taxing the muscle, putting that stress on the muscle, and tearing it down and forcing it to grow. You know, you're forcing it to grow by supersetting um, a specific exercise and doubling that workload on that muscle belly. So, for instance, flat bench, barbell, superset with push-ups. You're going to add continuous stress on that. Pull-ups, supersetting with seated rows, things of that nature. Um, anything that's going to put some stress 
and force that muscle to be stimulated and break down even further to grow. Speaking of force, that goes into number three, force reps. Now, you can't try this without a partner. You need a training partner, or if you have a personal trainer, I really love um, force reps with a good training partner. I mean, somebody that knows where to support your arms at, somebody that knows how to support you to get the most output out of your lifts. You gotta have somebody who knows what they're doing. Somebody's pulling your wrist or not really supporting your elbows on those lifts or not supporting your lower back. Yeah, you need somebody who's really in tune to how to get the most effort out of you in order to get the best lift. So force reps are great. They're gonna always, always, always force that muscle to be super stimulated and to grow more. Now here we go. Number four is that diet, that eating program as they call it. Listen, there's no way you can see these muscles that you're building if you're covered in fat, if your body's covered in fat. No way you can see these muscles you're building. No way you can see the separation. No way you're gonna be able to appreciate all the hard work you've done if you aren't cutting weight, putting your body in a caloric deficit in order to see these muscles that you've built. So your diet, your eating program, whatever you want to call it, I, I prefer eating program, has to be strong. So figure out your numbers, find out what puts your body in the caloric deficit, eat appropriately, eat as clean as you can, and when you start to look the way you want, there you go, you have it, you're there. Your muscles will be full, thick, big, and because you got a balanced eating program, they're gonna look great, all right? Now number five, some people take this for granted, but you can't, and this is not just for the pros, but you gotta get that rest in. I talked about my last video about training tired, training fatigue, so you know how I feel about that. You should never train when your body is under duress and stress of that nature. Now, I've never said you can't train when you're a little tired. Or if you just saying you don't feel like it because you don't feel like it, that's just being lazy. I'm talking about fatigue. But that goes back into my point of number five is that you need that rest. You need to give your body ample time to rest, to heal, to recover, so you can get back at beating it up and trying to gain that muscle. Now, figure out what that time limit is for you. And of course, you have to balance that with your workload, with your family, with anything else that you do in your life, you have to have that time management to be able to put those things together in order for you to maximize resting and working out. So guess what? With that being said, I got work to do. And so do you. So get to it. <laughs> get dirty doing it. But most importantly, get it done!